And I'm now joined by Luke O'Connor, uh, Irish Freedom Party representative here in Kilkenny. Luke, we're here at um, River Riverview House or John's Hall, as uh, the local people here in Kilkenny uh, would, would call it. Um, this is a, going to be a site for an IFAS centre here in Kilkenny. Yeah, uh, and what's interesting about about this site is that uh, you know only for we had a local a local guy video and. Uh, one of the workers coming out of here um, who was actually involved in one of the other iPass centers up, up the west, uh, we wouldn't actually know that this is ready to go now. Do you know, so that's that's kind of one of the things that was most stark, starkly illustrated by this was that we actually broke the story and the local news media are only responding to the story that we broke. You know, so it's, 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 it's bad when you can't rely on your local politicians, your local media to actually tell the truth about what's happening in the area, you know. And I believe back in 2022, towards December 2022, um, there was a planning application to turn this into a retail and um, an office space, but that was turned down. So two years later, it's now becoming uh, an iPass centre. Yeah, and, and, and like a lot of people, like I think it was supposed to be a coffee shop slash shop, but that was, that was what they were looking for. But like the, the, council, the council didn't want to know, and this is what, what happened. And like what you see here at this building, if you looked at it from the outside, you'd swear it was derelict. You know, yeah. but we know that it's actually all kitted out inside, ready to go. Um, it's like it's almost a plan to make it look as disheveled as possible on the outside, while having it ready to go uh, as an asylum centre on the inside. You know, and you've had a number of uh, peaceful protests here in the last the last little while. Um, how has how has that been? Like, what kind of numbers have you got, and what's the response been like from the general public? The response has been has been uh, brilliant. I think we had we had forty to fifty people here uh, last Friday. Um, this Friday, uh, we're hoping to have people assemble at the town hall and then march up here um, at seven p.m. at the town hall. So look, like regardless of the numbers actually turning up, which is substantial, the actual support we're getting from people driving past the centre is unbelievable. You know. Uh, I, like the the car horns didn't start beat, didn't stop beeping, you know, all the time we were here last Friday. So look, people are against it. It's just, and what I'm trying to do now is, is to make sure that, you know, the local residents here, that they are heard and that they they are able to stand up for themselves because, like, I'd like to see them, you know, powering this rather than, you know me all the time you know banging the same old drums you know yeah, because obviously yeah, yeah. obviously everyone knows my position around around immigration and illegal immigration so it, it, it's more it, it'll actually be more substantial when the local residents here uh, make their feelings known to their public representatives you know? and why do you feel the local residents are kind of reluctant to kind of stick their head head up above the parapet so to speak nobody wants to end up like luke o'connor do they you know, like uh, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a, uh, it's not a, it's not an attractive thing to do to, to 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 stand up against this stuff. You know, it's it's one of these things. Like during the election, I had people walking up to me all the time, almost whispering to me. You know, like uh, you know, you were right about that. You know, so yeah. they're nearly afraid to say it, but like anyone can see what's happening because of this. Like it's not only this area. A leaked audio uh, of one of the uh, asylum uh, kind of landlords, for want of a better word, yep. leaked audio showed that Jenkins Town is another area that's under that's that they're looking at. Um, uh, local residents of Ballyragged have been in touch with Roderick O'Gorman's department. Uh, they've re- received generic responses, actually quite disrespectful, to be quite honest. So they're worried about Heather Court. They can see building materials going in there every day, and uh, the other area is. Um, in Kilkenny City somewhere. Yeah, it's it's sorry, Walls Lock. Walls Lock, oh, yeah, Walls yeah, Lock yeah, is yeah. is ready to go, you know. And yeah. like that's a, that's an even that's an even more dangerous one because um, like surely they're going to have to they're going to have to put on a ready made bus service for it. Yeah. You know, there's going to be that many of them out there, and like it's a good bit out from town, like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a good five kilometers out. So uh, that's 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 uh, and like uh, you can see it, like all the resources, our resources are being drained, you know, in in every way. Uh, you know, economically, uh, you have even even like uh, community amenities, like mm. you know, for for instance, the the walls lock the, the sports arena, you know. Yeah, and I believe the Department of uh, Integration they're setting up a community kind of engagement team. Is is that a bit late in the day to be doing things like that? Yeah, it's it's funny, like it's it's funny if you think about it. If it wasn't so serious, like like um, 
you can see that uh, the, the, the the community integration thing after the contract is signed, you know, and none of this would be ha like again. I have to stress, none of this would be happening only. Uh, we had a local residence here who got a video there the other day. There you go. Uh, and uh, yes, they're starting to, they're starting to recognize me on this road. Yeah. But uh, uh, no, only one of our guys caught him on video. Like, this wouldn't even be talked about. Like, yeah. you know, it just would have been thrown in. Nobody would have seen anything. So I'm, I'm actually, I'm very proud of the local people here because they're actually after, they're after shining a light on it. Whereas it, it, it would, if we were relying on the media to do it or the mainstream media, you know, it wouldn't be done. And the county council, they have very their role in this is is very very small. If once this building gets a, a fire certificate, there that's more or less it. They're it's they're good to go. Yeah, well, like, like the, the problem the problem with it is is that um, like uh, the problem that I would always seen was that the county council they should uh, by right have someone like part of, half your job as a county councillor is. Uh, being a public representative that's what the yeah. the government guidelines say that, you know you, you're there as, as to represent people's views yeah every single county councillor including including one who actually ran on ran on this immigration partly as one of his issues have not said a dicky bird about this they haven't said it a thing and like it's something that really annoys me because uh fair enough you, you can you can understand in one sense you know the likes of Roderick O'Gorman and the Greens, like they're ideologically tied to open borders. That's what they yeah. believe. You know, I have I have a certain amount of respect for that. Yeah. But what I don't have respect for is guys who like to talk talk on immigration, but really at the end of the day, they have no, they, they don't want to get involved. And that for for me, that's uh, Andrew and John McGuinness and Eugene McGuinness. So that's them in a nutshell. Because I I'm actually more let down by. Uh, Eugene McGuinness than than anyone, you know, because I wouldn't have to I wouldn't have to do this if he was willing to do his job, you know. This is what he was elected to do, you know. Yeah, exactly. And where do you see things going from 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 here? I know there was an interest in stats in the last five years. It says Ireland, with one percent of the EU's population, has taken about twenty percent of um, asylum seekers who have come into the European Union. Yeah, like uh, uh, it was a it was a, a junior economist put it up on Twitter the other day, and there was a few of us looking at the figure going, that can't be, that can't be, because when you look at the figure, you go, I think it's about three hundred eighty thousand have come into the EU on a whole, and we've taken about a fifth of that. Like right. I couldn't, I couldn't believe that. Like I, I, I nearly, I had to go and actually check the figures to make sure that it was it was right, because you, you see a lot of disinformation. But no, it was one hundred percent correct, you know. And 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 like the reality is, it's it's for me. It's a. Uh, I'm always on the economic side of things, you know, the economic argument, and there, there, there's no economic argument for what we're doing to the country. You know, we're, we're, we're actually destroying the place in terms like our biggest indigenous industry is tourism, right? We saw with the Kilkenny Inn Hotel that had a huge detrimental impact to that part of the town and and, and tourism in Kilkenny. Um, you know, I still haven't seen any figures that have said that Kilkenny has rebounded uh, from COVID. You know, I still I think we're waiting on those figures to come out. But the last two years they hadn't, you know, they hadn't yeah. come back. Yeah. So the the thing about it is is that um like it's our biggest indigenous industry, you know. Uh what are we seeing at the moment that the multinationals we're not gonna have the same tax receipts as we used to have, you that, know. And will reduce over time. Yeah. That's gonna reduce. So we're gutting our biggest indigenous industry at a time when the economy is gonna see changes. Like we we've made a huge mistake here in Ireland in gearing everything in our country for the big corporate multinationals you know and and that's a that's a huge and you know it should, it, it's funny because it's me saying it and you, you don't hear the you don't hear uh, labor or the left wing it used to be the the left wing thing you know go after the big corporations but they're actually afraid to do it now do you know yeah. Sinn Féin Sinn Féin in the last couple of years have made great strides in trying to you know cuddle up to the big uh, multinationals so yeah it's actually their 500 dollar plates in the dollar a plate um uh, dues, dues in America and um, what would you say to um, to people to our viewers out there as well who um, might say that look that this what you're doing is kind of sending out the wrong message it's it's pro you know that Ireland is a welcoming place but you're you know yeah. putting in the impression that that we're not yeah like uh, I often hear that that kind of leading heart argument like the reality is i have a lot of friends who come from different countries um a lot of eastern europeans some ukrainians uh, I've, i know a lot of people throughout my life 
And nobody would ever accuse me of being unwelcoming to anyone you know, who, who's coming here to try and make a better life. I don't have a problem with the, the people who are coming here. I have a problem with the government policy. And, you know, a lot of people find it hard to separate that. You know, um, like the, the reality is, unless we get this situation under control, you're going to see huge socioeconomic uh, upheaval in the next five years. And, you know, I think it's incumbent on the government to kind of reach out to communities rather than, you know, castigate them. Like, we saw what happened in Kulak. Um, and, uh, like, the, the thing about Kulak was that they, they for three months, they peacefully protested outside that, outside that centre. Yeah. And it was until, it was until uh, the special order units that you saw, you saw trouble, you know. Um, and that's, uh, you know, that, that, like, that's not good enough for a, for a community that's so disadvantaged, you know. And I, I, there's this kind of there's this kind of condescension about working class people, you know, that oh, you know, if they have a certain accent or something, you know, we can treat them any way we like, you know, and that's something that I've always found abhorrent, you know. Yeah, exactly. Well, Luke, thanks for taking the time to talk to us here on the Irish Political Roundup, and um, uh, we wish you every every success with your your peaceful protest in in the in the weeks ahead.